Welcome to Story Station, Season 2, Episode 8. In this episode, you can listen to two South American stories. The first story is titled, The Disobedient Son. This poor mother couldn't get her son to listen to her, so she sent him to his godfather. The second story is titled, Why the Monkey Still Has a Tail. When the cat steals the monkey's tail, he has to go on a great adventure to get it back. Hope you enjoy it! I will read a story called, The Disobedient Son. There was once a boy who was rude and would not obey his mother. He would go out for a walk without having eaten. He wouldn't come back until late, about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. At 10 o'clock, his mother was still waiting up and worrying about him. What have you been doing, son? His mother asked him. I'm going to bed because it's late, and I have just been waiting for you. You don't pay any attention to anything I tell you. I'm going to send you to your godfather. You don't pay any attention to what I tell you. The boy's mother went to see the priest. Compadre, what can be done about your godson? He's quite a scoundrel and doesn't obey me at all. You're a priest, and you can counsel and discipline this godson of yours. I can't do anything with him. This godson of yours is a rascal, compadre. Let him come to stay here with you to see if he'll learn to behave. All right, comadre. Have him come here. Why shouldn't he do what I tell him? I'm indeed a priest. I'll teach my godson to work. Don't worry, comadre. My godson is going to obey me. The woman then said to her son, Go with your godfather, my son. He'll teach you. Since he won't obey me, go and work there. All right, mother. I'll go to my godfather's. Since I'm not of any use to you, I'll go work with my godfather. I have come, godfather. What can I do for you? Oh, stay with your godfather, my mother said. That's why I came here to you. My mother is the one who sent me. All right, godson, the priest said to him. You're going to work for me. All right, godfather, I'm going to work. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. Everything you tell me, I will do. All right, then I'm going to tell you something, said the priest. Tomorrow morning, early, you're going to sleep. Three o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to awaken you, so I'm just telling you now. All right, said the boy. At dawn, he went and swept, and when he finished sweeping, he went to tell his godfather. I finished sweeping all of the church, so now I've come to tell you. All right, godson. I'm glad you've finished. Now go rest. Another day passed and the godfather gave him this next task. Now, godson, I'm going to tell you what you have to do tomorrow morning. You're going to ring the bell at six o'clock. I want you to ring three times, and when you're finished, come and tell me, and I'll go say mass. All right, said the boy. And when the next day was over, the boy went to ring the bell, and he told his godfather, I rang the bell three times. It's time to get up and go say mass, he told his godfather. Another day was over, and the priest spoke once more to the godson. Now I'm going to tell you once more what you have to do tomorrow. Ring the bell again, early at three o'clock in the morning. All right, said the boy. The boy got up and remembered to ring the bell. He went to ring the bell in the belfry. But the priest had given the boy a test. He had left a skeleton in the belfry. The boy got there at three o'clock in the morning and found the skeleton standing in his way. He said to it, Get out of my way! I'm coming to ring the bell. 
Don't get in my way. For my godfather sent me to ring the bell. Get out of my way or I'll kill you. He didn't get out of the way, and he didn't move, and he didn't answer. Skeleton, you must answer, or do you want me to kill you? Said the boy asked the skeleton. For the third time, if you don't answer me, I'm going to smash you to pieces. If that's what you want, you, that's why you got in my way. So now you're going to die. I'm going to throw you all the way down from here. And he pushed the skeleton out of the belfry. When he had smashed the skeleton, he rang the bell and came down from the belfry. He went to his godfather's bedroom and knocked on the door to waken him. The godfather woke up and answered the door. What is it? the priest asked the boy. Get up. I've already rung the bell, the boy told the priest. He heard this and was surprised. Oh, did you ring the bell? asked the priest. Yes, I rang the bell, godfather, the boy said. And you didn't see anything in the belfry? Yes, godfather, the boy answered. I did see something. I saw someone who was standing in my way and wouldn't let me get by to ring the bell, the boy answered. Oh, so what did you do? asked the priest. Weren't you afraid of him? No, godfather. So what did you do? I pushed him, and he fell and broke into pieces on the floor. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. The next story begins in a moment. I will read a story called, Why the Monkey Still Has a Tail. Once upon a time, the monkey and the rabbit made a contract. The monkey was to kill all the butterflies, and the rabbit was to kill all the snakes. One day, the rabbit was taking a nap when the monkey passed that way. The monkey thought that he would play a trick on the rabbit. So he pulled the rabbit's ears, pretending that he thought they were butterflies. The rabbit awoke, very angry at the monkey, and he plotted how he might revenge himself. The rabbit and the armadillo were very good friends, and the armadillo is very, very strong, as you know. So it was he whom the rabbit asked to help him. One day, the rabbit caught the monkey napping and he had watched and waited a long, long time to catch the monkey napping, but at last he succeeded. Even the monkey sometimes takes a nap. The rabbit called the armadillo at once, and together they rolled a big stone upon the monkey's tail, and the monkey pulled so hard to get his tail out from under the stone that it broke off. The cat, who at that time had no tail of her own, spied the tail and ran away with it. The monkey was very angry at the rabbit. Oh, we thought it was just a snake lying there, said the rabbit. When you pulled my ears, you know, you thought they were butterflies. That did not help the monkey feel any better. How was he to live without his tail? How could he climb without it? He simply had to have it back, so he at once set out to find the cat. At last, he found the cat and said to her, Oh, kind cat, please give me back my tail. I will give it to you, replied the cat, if you can get me some milk. Where shall I get the milk? asked the monkey. Go ask the cow for some, replied the cat. The monkey went to the cow and said, Oh, kind cow, please give me some milk, that I may give the milk to the cat, so that the cat will give my tail back to me. I will give you the milk, replied the cow, if you will get me some grass. Where shall I get the grass? asked the monkey. Go ask the farmer, responded the cow. The monkey went to the farmer and said, 
Oh, kind farmer, please give me some grass that I may give the grass to the cow, so that the cow will give me some milk, and so that I may give the milk to the cat, so the cat will give back my tail. The farmer said, I will give you some grass if you will give me some rain. Where shall I get the rain? asked the monkey. Go ask the clouds. So the monkey went to the clouds and said, Oh, kind clouds, please send me down some rain, so that I may give the rain to the farmer, so the farmer will give me some grass, so I may give the grass to the cow, so the cow will give me some milk, so that I may give the milk to the cat, so the cat will give me back my tail. I will give you some rain, replied the clouds, if you will get me some fog. Where should I get the fog? asked the monkey. Go ask the rivers. The monkey went to the river and said, Oh, kind river, please give me a fog so that I may give the fog to the clouds. So the clouds will give me some rain so that I give the rain to the farmer. So the rain will, the farmer will give me some grass so that I may give the grass to the cow. So the cow will give me some milk so that I may give the milk to the cat. So the cat will give me back my tail. I will give you a frog, replied the river, if you will find a new spring to feed me. Where should I find a spring? asked the monkey. Go and search for one among the rocks upon the hillside. Then the monkey climbed up the steep hill and searched and searched among the rocks until at last he found a little spring to feed the river. He brought the spring to the river, and the river gave him a fog. He took the fog to the clouds, and the fog gave the clouds gave him some rain. He took the rain to the farmer, and the farmer gave him some grass. He took the grass to the cow, and the cow gave him milk. He took the milk to the cat, and the cat gave him back his tail. The monkey was so glad to have his tail again that he danced and danced with glee. And ever since that time, the monkey has been very careful to guard his tail. He still has one, and he is still happy because of it. The end. I hope you like this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.